Okay, in this video we're going to cover wounds. And this is going to be chapter 9 if you're following along in your book. So, there are different types of wounds. Let's talk about open wounds. So we're going to talk about open wounds first. And to give you a simple definition, this is just simply can be as simple as a break in the skin. That is supposed to be an E and that is supposed to be an A. So, okay, we have different types of open wounds. We have abrasions. So, abrasions. And we have lacerations. We also have incisions. We have puncture wounds. Punctures. And we have amputations. All right, let's go up to abrasions. This can be as simple as a scrape, or you're just scraping off the skin, or it could be as severe as like road rash. If you uh, ride motorcycles. I know it's hard to, to read this. That's actually an A. It's maybe hard to read this. It's even harder to write it with this tablet. So we have lacerations where this is this is a cut, but we're talking about jagged skin where it's been torn, um, something where it's a force, forceful, forceful tearing. It's got the skin's gotten caught on something and torn, or um, that's probably the best example I can give to it's gotten caught in something and torn away and then you have incisions which are also cuts but they tend to be a clean cut like a it has smooth edges so we have smooth edges so something like a, a knife a knife cut or a razor or paper cut anything like that um, could cause an incision and you have a puncture wound, so something like a, a a nail. So it's enclosed. These are really hard to clean. Um, a puncture could be caused by a bite. So something could bite you, puncture a nail. Uh, any of that could um, cause a puncture wound. You have amputations where you've completely lost the body part. So, um, lost the body part. Let's come away from from the the body. So, like maybe you've gotten your finger cut off, a toe cut off, a leg cut off, an arm cut off, torn off. It doesn't matter. The 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 limbs are there. You also have partial amputations. And I've also heard those called avulsions. Um, I'll leave that out for right now because I'm not sure that it's in your book. But if you ever see an avulsion, it's like a partial amputation where you've torn away a part of the body. So you've got a piece hanging here, but it's still attached some way. So you've got like a, 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 a part torn away. Maybe this is, let's say, an earlobe. Let me draw that out. So you have your ear here, and you have the lobe here, but it's torn away some way. So you got it, it's torn away, it's about to fall off. So anyway, so let's say that's an ear. <laughs> Not a very good drawing, but you get the point. It's partially torn off, but it's still attached. And uh, that would be an avulsion or a partial amputation. I think your book refers to them as partial am amputations. I'm not 100% positive that it talks about avulsions. So let's talk about care for just a second. 
how are you going to care for an open wound? Well, it depends really on the type of open wound, but they all have some common themes here, and that's what I want to go over. You want to wear personal protective equipment, of course, because there's probably going to be some bleeding. And you want to expose the area so you can get to it. So like if, they, if they've got a shirt on or a jeans on or something like that, you're going to have to expose the area to get to it so that you can care for it. You want to control bleeding, of course. Bleeding. And you want to, um, after you control bleeding, you want to start cleaning the wound. Let's write cleaning up here. Yes. Still part of caring, but I, I want to break it up into a separal, separate part so that we can separate these so you control bleeding. Once you get that under control, it's time to clean. So um, it's best, again, to make sure you have your personal protective equipment on. If you don't have that, you could use something to create some sort of barrier, like multiple layers of gauze or something like that between you and the person. Of course, you still want to keep it exposed. So all those steps still apply. You want to start cleaning the wound. And there's several different ways to clean the wound. Um, you want to wash the inside of it. So you use soap and water and wash it. And you want to flush it with water. Depending on the type of wound you have, um, it may start to bleed again. So you may need to start controlling bleeding. If, if this is a puncture wound, you want to make sure that you get, after you try to clean it as best, best as possible, that you seek medical help. So you probably need a new tetanus shot, and we'll talk about that in just a second, on the importance of, of tetanus, because you don't want to be exposed to that bacteria, so you want to get a tetanus shot. So you want to seek a medical, uh, immediate medical help if it's a puncture wound. And this goes right along with cleaning, so follow these steps. We've got one, two, three, four here. We want to remove any small objects. So small objects, we want to remove them. So some tweezers, some uh, tweezers that have been cleaned. And again, after you do all this, you may have to control bleeding. So it may start to uh, bleed again, so you may want to put some sort of dressing over it to control the bleeding. Let's talk a little bit about tetanus real quick. Tetanus is important. It's something a lot of people don't realize. It's, it still happens in the U.S. It, it's more prevalent in other countries since we uh, give shots for tetanus. You want to get this every 10 years so you don't want to get behind. Most people that get tetanus, like also call it lockjaw, can be fatal, um, are elderly people or people that have never had a shot for tetanus. So let's talk a little bit more about amputations real quick. I'm not going to go over every area in your book because there's so many different ones I could spend a lot of time. I'm trying to keep these videos under 15 minutes ideally. Amputations. So with amputations you've got different types. You've got a guillotine which is just like a clean cut. Just like it sounds, like if a guillotine chops somebody's head off, I guess that's why they use that. Uh, it's a clean cut. More likely to have more success reattaching that limb or that digit. Then you have crushing. With the crushing, you're less likely to have success because it does so much damage. There's a poor chance of having it reattached but you know there's still a chance so you always want to um, try to care for the missing piece as best you can to give them a better chance and you have what's called degloving and this is almost it's similar to an avulsion an avulsion is like a partial amputation where it's still hanging on but this the digit may actually still be there but it's kind of peeled the skin away so it's torn the skin completely off so if you can imagine like rolling a sock off so let's say you, you lost some skin on your finger and it just kind of rolled off like a sock um, it's kind of like skinning the finger you know it, it's skinning that part of the body so that would be degloving 
So to care for this, or care for amputations, you, you of course want to control bleeding, and you may be surprised, uh, there may be a limited amount of bleeding if it's a, a complete amputation because of the vessels um, spasming and retracting. So you want to treat the person for shock. For shock, and remember we talked about um, psychogenic shock. This would definitely cause psychogenic shock. And if they've lost a lot of blood, blood, it may be hypovolemic shock. It just all depends on the situation, so it could be a different form of shock. But definitely psychogenic shock could definitely occur. And you want to recover the body part and you want to place it in some sort of, don't clean it, so when you recover don't clean because you may do more harm than good. Don't clean the recovered body part. Um, wrap it up and some sort of dressing, that's really just to protect it and put it in a waterproof bag, so waterproof bag or container, it doesn't have to be a bag and then put ice in it. So the reason you're wrapping it up is protected against the direct contact of that ice and you six seek a medical help. So seek medical help because it's not going to grow back. So that is amputations. One last thing I want to talk about, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this because, like I said, there's a lot of different areas on treating wounds. I just covered some of the most common um, impelled objects. Real quickly, and your book goes into more detail than this, um, you don't want to remove the object. Don't remove. You leave that object in because you may do more damage than good or you may actually cause them to start bleeding a lot more um, by removing it. Maybe keeping some arteries or some vessels from bleeding out so when you pull it out it might cause them to start to bleed. Um, so you may want you want to stabilize so you want to stabilize um, the object so it's not moving around doing more damage and you also want to make sure that you control bleeding and one last thing that you may want to consider if it's an extremely long object where it might bump into something when you're trying to get this person, you may have to shorten the object. So um, if it's too long, let's say it's like a fence post or something like that and you can't get them in the car, you may have to shorten the object. Don't pull it out, but you may have to cut it off. Um, still leave some of it protruding out of the skin so you can stabilize it as best as you can. But... Um, don't cut it off right up next to the skin. Leave a piece hanging out, but don't um, pull it out, whatever you do. So you may have to shorten the object. It just depends, especially if you're going to have to transport the person. So this is wounds. It's a really, I, I try to do a brief overview of the chapter. If you need more detail, go into the chapter. But this will at least give you some of the highlights. There are some other wounds, um, like blisters and stuff, that we didn't talk about and how to treat those. I just wanted to to cover the most severe. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.